So is he going to actually confront him here? Let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Free Dive to the Future, or Season 3, whichever you prefer, Episode 2. So, the first episode of this season kind of disappointed me. Because if I'm being honest, not only was I kind of expecting the focus to shift to uh, Nagisa and Rei, but I feel like it just worked the best, it, it would have worked the best narratively to do so. Because this series feels like it's, like, yeah, it's named after Haru's preferred swimming style. But at the same time, the series has always been about the Iwatobi Swim Club. And it just, it feels weird to just kind of leave that behind. Like, don't get me wrong, like, we saw in the first episode, the club is still going to be part of it, but it's going to be, like, I wouldn't even call it a B-plot. I'd call it, like, a C-plot. Because if anything, if if I would call anything like the B-plot, it would be more of the stuff with, uh, Samasica, and, and I guess specifically with, uh, uh... Oh my god, Ren? 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 Why is his name? Why do names escape me sometimes? You know who I'm talking about. Um, but instead, our a plot is still focusing on Haru and Makoto, and it's like, yeah, I, I get that they're the main characters, but it, narratively, it would have worked better to switch that up. It would have worked better to have them be, you know, the side plot while the focus remained on the Iwatobi Swim Club and now Nagisa and Rei, I, I think that just would have worked better. But that's not what I went with. Instead, we're following Haru and Makoto into college and just kind of not changing the status quo. And some people will tell you that's a good thing. Some people will say like, oh, you shouldn't change the status quo. It's the status quo for a reason and all. But I have never believed in that. I believe that things need to change in order for, you know, shows to go on this long. You need to make changes, otherwise it becomes stale. You don't want your series to become stale. Why do you think people say that about The Simpsons nowadays? That series has been going on for so long, it, it's just nothing new at this point. It's nothing special anymore. And don't get me wrong, you can still have like good episodes and, and, and content here and there, but overall the series just lacks that luster that it used to have. Simpsons is nowhere near as popular as it used to be. And it probably will never reach that popularity again. Mind you, this is only the fourth season. It's nowhere, or third season rather. It's nowhere near the level of episodes and years that uh, had been going on with The Simpsons. But... With an anime, and with a seasonal anime like this, the, 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 the fading tends to come in a little quicker. Like I said, a lot of these shows have to change the status quo. Whether they're based on manga or not, that really doesn't matter all that much. Now, I don't... I think Free is based on a manga. I think. Um, so th this issue, I guess, goes it with the manga as well. And that's what you have to really think about. Like, like let's look into other shows. Like My Hero Academia, just as a random example. My Hero Academia has, what, six seasons currently out, I believe? Something like that? And 
the thing is, it has to have changed its focuses a little. And My Hero has done this by making it more intense and by bringing in this war. By integrating this war and by raising the stakes, it changes the status quo from a fun little series about superheroes in training to something much bigger, much more intense, much more exciting. And it deals with a lot more heavy shit. And that's, that's honestly a very minor way to handle it. Like, the, the changes that my hero made were small, but it still worked. But it, it also proves that they don't have to be major changes. You have a series like One Piece in comparison, and this one, I guess, like, lengthwise is more comparable to The Simpsons. Um, but with One Piece... The, the series that you watched at the very beginning in the East Blue is nothing like where it is now. Hell, honestly, it's it, the East Blue is so exceptionally different from Alabasta. <laughs> the series with One Piece has evolved and grown over time. It's had to change. It's had to develop and, you know, mess with the status quo on multiple occasions. Because that's how a series works, especially something that's going to last a long time. And granted, even though Oda never planned on One Piece lasting this long, as it did end up going that way, he still had to change it. He still had to grow the stakes and the, the themes and messages and whatnot. And he did so excellently. But then, uh, now you have Free, and it's like, really the only change of status quo is that Haru and Makoto are in college instead of high school now? It, it, it feels no different. Hell, even bringing in this new uh, former friend, it just feels like they're kind of rehashing plots. It's like, oh, we have a former friend that I'm not in, on the best terms with anymore. Uh, but by the end of the season, we're going to be best buddies again. It's like, we've seen this before. Like, I think in both of the previous seasons, they did this exact plot. And it's like, you're really just rehashing the same thing over and over. That is so creatively lacking. And on top of that, it's just, it's not fun to watch. And I'm saying all of this, I'm going on this big rambly rant because I want to make it clear that I like this series. I liked it a lot more than I ever would have thought I would. I've said this in the previous seasons and all. I honestly thought I would have dropped this show. But it ended up being one that I really, really enjoy. And the fact that it's not changing its status quo at the exact perfect point to do so, when Haru and Makoto go off to college, that's the exact time you should be changing things up. But the fact that it seems to be refusing to is really disappointing. Because I want better for this series. And at least for now, and to my knowledge, like for good, this is the final season. The only thing after this is a movie, and I believe the movie is the f like final piece of uh, media for this series. So it's like, I don't want this to like you know fade out with a whimper. I want the series to end on a very high note, and I just don't feel like it's going to do so if it just keeps rehashing the same stuff over and over. It's not taking risks. It, it's like there's a complacency. It's like, oh, this worked for the previous uh, season, or in case of the manga, the previous set of uh, chapters and volumes and whatnot. Well, if it worked then, it's, it'll, it'll work now, so we just let's just do it again. 
just change up the specifics a little bit. That's so lazy. And it just stagnates the series. So, I'm really hoping that this can change my mind. That this season does end up going in a different direction. And this is just... This is just how it's starting to throw us off. I hope that's the case. And they don't even need to do like a full shift of perspective. It, but they need to change the status quo somehow. Because I don't want to just watch the same thing for the third time. Even if it ends up being entertaining, I, I want new content. You know what I mean? But we'll see. We'll see. We'll continue to give it a chance for now, obviously. Especially with how much I've enjoyed this series. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how it handles itself before any kind of decisions are made one way or the other. So let's just get this going and hope for the best with this episode. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I've said this before, but I really don't like how a lot of these anime will put the preview for next time right after the episode, instead of, like, after the, um, the, um, credits, the ending. Because it, like, it comes out of nowhere, and it's like, I don't want to be spoiled for next episode. Um... But at the, and at the same time, it's like there, there's not really much I can do to avoid that because it's like it just happens. It's it, it, it's irritating. Anyway, so Ikea is like super gay. Um, <laughs> that like listen, I, I was saying in the reaction, uh, I'll talk about it here too. So this is one of those series that like is all about the 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 queer coding for those who don't understand what that means it basically means that the show and the characters are are very much depicted as gay without being explicitly said to be gay this isn't like given where in that series it's very explicitly said and you know you have kissing and whatnot it's not like that with this it's it, it can get pretty apparent, but it never directly says anything, never directly confirms anything. But it's very clear to anyone watching, it, it's queer-coded. And with a lot of it, you can just kind of go like, oh, I ship these characters together, or no, maybe these characters work together a little better. But again, it's it's mostly just ends up being shipping. So when you now introduce in the third season a character who is so like vi vibrantly gay <laughs> it, it, it's kind of funny to me because it's like with Ikea they're really not hiding it that much it, it, it's the most blatant the most in your face about it this series has been the way he looks at Haru the entire thing with the shooting star like the, the them watching the shooting stars together and then like Ikea leaning into Haru the way that he does like come the fuck on like I, th I think the other guy's name is Iori uh, very clearly is a, a Ikea's boyfriend like it's super obvious the way that he uh, is defensive and, and protective of Ikea and just it, it's like that's not a friendship thing I'm sorry but it's like friends can be very protective over each other for sure but the way he's doing it and the the very clear looks that he gives him and everything like they're more than just friends like come on and you know as someone who loves queer representation in media 
even if this is never explicitly said that they're boyfriends, it's very, very much implied. To the point where it basically doesn't even need to be explicitly said. It's like the context tells you literally everything. So, why would they do this? And the answer is actually pretty simple. Um, there's a lot of times where Japan is very behind when it comes to this kind of thing. When it comes to uh, not just queer representation, but queerness in their culture. In real life. And... It's, it's not as bad as, like, some other places in the world, of course. But they're not as accepting as, like, America or Canada is. It's, it's, it's just, there's, they've got a long way to go. And while there are a lot of manga and anime that do, like, have very blatant, uh, you know, queerness in it, um, let's be honest, a lot of time it's, very fetishized um even if not like in a strictly sexual sense it's often portrayed as like this as something that you're supposed to be into rather than you know acting natural but there are those occasions where you do get a very natural amount of queer rep um you have that in Carol and Tuesday. That's a great example. Given, I mentioned before, which is an amazing gay love series. It's like there there are those examples of shows and even movies from the anime industry that do get it right. Um, it, it's hard to say how this is going to go so far, though, because right now this is, it, again, it's mostly just implication. I don't think they're going to, like, directly say anything or show Ikea and, like, Iori kissing or whatnot. I don't think it's going to go in that direction. If it does, I will be excessively surprised and pleased, as long as it's handled well, of course. But it's still, nonetheless, blatantly obvious. <laughs> Like in the first episode, we only get a brief glimpse of the Iwatobi group in this episode, and it's still really disappointing. Because as much as I, I enjoyed seeing the very blatant gayness in this episode, I still really wish that they had, you know, focused on Iwatobi's side of things. We got to get a brief glimpse at a couple of the new members and how they're integrating in, and it it's really good. Like, they're integrating in well. They seem to be connecting with uh, our senior members really well. And they're even being super useful. Th this girl, who's the new uh, assistant coach with Go, like, her her info dump there on this uh, little uh, swim meet and everything, or whatever it was exactly, like, that was big information for them to learn. That they could be meeting with their old friends and introduced to their new friends a lot quicker than they anticipated. And she just pulled this out of the top of her head. She just had this information ready. That's useful. She knows what she's talking about. She has information. She is following in Go's footsteps at being a very useful member of the team, even though she's not swimming herself. And that's great. That's amazing to see. And then you have this other guy who was born in New York and everything. It's like they're giving us information. They're developing these characters. But they're still like, a, again, like a B plot, C plot. And it's like, we're still focusing on the stuff with, well, now Ikuya and Haru's relationship. Which... Mind you, I don't dislike seeing, I just wish the focus was more on Iwatobi. And now next episode, since, you know, got spoiled on that because of the stupid preview being put where it was, uh, apparently is going to focus on the, uh, Rin. So it's now, now we've got like A plot, B plot, C plot, and it's like, just like, there's way too much going on here. <laughs> 
Like we we don't need to focus on all of this. It's it's not going to be easy or smart because it's just going to spread a lot of this very thin. And I'm I'm really worried that that none of the plots are going to get the focus and attention they deserve. I guess we'll see, but yeah. I'm really worried for this season like so far. It, it it's just it's concerning to me the way they're handling this. But maybe it'll prove me wrong. Hopefully it will prove me wrong. We will definitely have to wait and see. So Tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode of Free Dive to the Future? Let me know. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.